Welcome to Projects for All. My name's Mike, and today, today I'm freaking excited because we have a brand new brand on the channel to check out, Bosch. I've wanted to check out this table saw since before I started doing YouTube. It cost me over $700 with the left side support. I'm expecting big things. I'm expecting a quality product. Let's get in here, we'll get it out of the box, put it together, and see if it delivers. If you want a close look at the stand and how it goes together, or the fence and the trouble I had with it when I first took this out of the box, there's a video for that. The link's right here. Part one is the stand and the fence and my experience with their customer service about the fence. So if that's got your interest, check that out. That's the first video to this. This will have more detail about everything else. We've got a lot of stuff to talk about with this saw, so let's get rolling. We'll start on the front like we always do. You get a power switch on, very nice big off paddle. There is a way to lock this down that's hilariously unconventional. There is a tab behind here. You take it and flip it around and it blocks your on switch. Now, this slot is freed up and if you push this in, there's a spot to put a padlock. So if you're gonna put this in a school or you have an orange cat at home that you do not trust, you can lock this thing down. To switch it back, slide this back, just stick your finger in there and push the tab back in and it flips back around. And it locks in, and there you go. You have your blade height adjuster, just like every saw, you have up and you have down. To bevel your saw, you have this nice big red pointer and a nice big fat easy to read scale. That goes to the left and your bevel's free. You can set your bevel. It's got stops for 45 and zero that appear by the scale to be off. So we're gonna check that. Locking it, flip it back up. Nice and secure. You would think this lever is to lock and unlock your fence, because that's kind of what we've all gotten used to, but it's not. It's for the table extension. Your fence is free whether that's locked down or not. But when you unlock that, you can slide your whole table extension over, and technically still move your fence around, but we're gonna spend some time talking about this. On the right side of your saw, you have a couple things going on. You have obviously your handle to unlock your stand, to fold your stand. You have your kickback pawl here, which is yeah, a little bit tight. Mechanism looks like that. And you have your blade guard. Blade guard unlocks. It's got a nylon hoop here behind the storage for your riving knife and for your blade guard. There's a metal stud here, holds your wrench. With enough space here for at least a few blades, extra if you want to take them. Also right here, Allen key, nice and long for making adjustments. Fits in a hole right here and there's a grommet you stick it in. And then you get a place here to store your fence if you're not using your fence. It doesn't, at least on mine, fit very tight, and I wouldn't want to keep it here when I'm moving the saw around, but it is a fairly secure place to stick your fence if you're going to not be using it for a few minutes. On the back side here, we have a cord keeper. Short cord, I would guess, is about, yep, six feet long. Pull this bracket up, and you can tilt this out, and this is your fence extension for ripping thin pieces. And it fits right in like so. Dust collection is really shallow. It's metal, which is nice, but it does not stick out very far. I mean, not far at all. And it's gonna be kind of difficult to screw something down to this. There's a metal plate here. Let's have a look when we bevel our saw. So that metal plate rotates to block that space. Here on the left side, more stuff going on. We've got a space for our miter gauge. Miter gauge is metal. Oh, metal. A miter gauge that we might actually 
find usable on a job site saw, I'm actually kind of excited. So I knew kind of going in, because this is Bosch, it's going to be unique and it's going to have some oddball designs. It has this spring-loaded plastic bracket that allows you to pull this through in this channel. The front of your saw is here, so you're pulling this backwards, or I should say it fits in there backwards. The handle would make more sense if it was on this side. However, this is the way they designed it. It's totally goofy and I love it. The miter gauge just press fits down in that slot right there. It holds it in there pretty tight. I don't think it's going anywhere. So I took the fence off here so we can look at this tabletop, which is yet again another oddball design. This is just under 22 and a half by about 30 and an eighth. When we get rid of the extension, about 24 and 5 eighths. This is not a rack and pinion fence system. This is a old school squeeze bolt ends fence system. And to get the 30 inches of rip that's advertised, you need this extension for your fence here. It's on a rail, just like a rack and pinion fence, but it's different, and let's look at it. The ruler on this rail is a little hard for me to show you guys because it's very reflective, but in real life, it's really easy to read, and I like this material that they use, this metallic silver material. Zero, clearly. Your blade's at about one inch or so straight here because the fence sight is offset. You'll notice one, two, three, four, five, but then 22, 23, 24, 25 going the other way. The reason for this is because it's not racking pinion and it doesn't just stretch out the extension and when you extend it moves the entire ruler and everything along with the table extension. The way to use this is unique, and it's not bad, actually. They did a really nice job with this. You bring your fence to 14 and a half, which is where the silver meets the black. You line your fence up with the 14 and a half, you lock it down. Now you use this pointer and this ruler. So if we set it to 17, Right there, we are now 17 inches from our fence to our blade. And that stretches all the way out. Gets a little tight at the end to push. And it binds a little bit, but just a little. And we are now at 30 inches. When this fence is all the way out, the remainder of this table, this extension here, is two and five eighths. So you get two and five eighths to run material on, which is really nice. You're using your extension. This little red pointer here is very easy to read. It's got a screw here so you can adjust it. By contrast, there's a little red pointer here. And I find this incredibly hard to read. And I have to cover it with my hand. I don't know if I can do that on camera, but usually I'll shield the light from above so I can get rid of the glare on this convex little sight glass. It's supposed to magnify the ruler, which is a really cool idea and I like it, but you could probably see there's a lot of glare and there's always glare right in the middle. And for me, it makes this really hard to see. I can't see the point. I give them an A for effort, but honestly, I really don't like this. I'm probably gonna take this apart and pop the little lens out of there so I just have the pointer and then I think it'll be fine. This extension rail is very smooth. Pushing in and out, even, even pushing from one side like the front and not in the middle. It works excellent. It feels like good quality. The lever in the front locks the rail. It's not going anywhere. So we got our throat plate. No retention system on this one. Really nice finish on this thing. Very nice red color. Little piece of spring steel. That is the only thing that holds this down. A wide open back so you can pull this off of here even if you have your blade guard installed, which is nice. Just pops in. I mean, it, it sounds and looks floppy, but it's pretty secure. 
So we've got our blade all the way up. It has this little yellow dot here, which I've never noticed in any of the pictures. It says, use soft pencil, pre-cut locator. So the idea is you would put a straight edge on either side of your blade, presumably on the carbide tips and draw a line on this. So you can see where the kerf of your blade is. So if you're feeding something cross cut by hand, you can line it up here. This is a smart idea and I've always done this with the zero clearance MDF plates and I just draw right on the plate themselves. The saw comes with one blade. You get a 12 point wrench and the other side is six point. And it's fairly small, but you only need one because it has an arbor lock system. So you pull that lever up you find the flat spot on your blade. While you're holding that arbor lock, you put your wrench on and arbor nut, big fat keyed washer. That thing's huge. 10 inches, 5 eighths arbor, general purpose 24 tooth blade. The inner washer is massive also. The part that the arbor lock locks to is still down inside there. So this washer is not the thing that it locks into. I don't know if that's good or bad. If it locks into the washer and you strip this out eventually, you can just replace it. On this saw, it's down here. So putting that keyed washer on allows you to turn your arbor. The threads on this arbor are not the smoothest ones I've felt. Very similar to the little red skill, the first one. Not the one we just did, that one's better. But this feels like it's probably gonna loosen up pretty quick. The riving knife on this has the lever, very standard. Flip up the lever. The riving knife, like a lot of these saws, gets really loose to the point where it'll just fall back down. Three positions, all the way up, halfway, and then down so far it almost disappears and you can lock it in that position. So there you go. This is actually, I'm going to show you all the adjustments, but this is one of the straightest out of the box riving knives I've found so far. And we're getting to the point where we've done quite a few. So I have the left side support for this, not the rear. I didn't buy the rear on this because honestly I'm not going to use it. It is, the rear looks very similar to the design of the side. We'll put this one on and let's see how this fits. A couple brackets, nice aluminum, and a couple rods. I have no idea why they're different lengths. We're going to find out in a second here. These brackets are not the same in that one's got this rib on the side here and accepts the locking knob. This will be the one that goes in the front. This will be the one that goes in the back. The mounting points are pretty much the same front and rear. You get a little more space in the front. Here's your screw holes here and here. And the bracket just goes on like so. Five millimeter hex on these. This is the short rod. The long one's in the back here. There's a couple C clips that fit in a slot in the front here and then one in the back. Limits the range of motion. And then we'll install our plate. You get a washer and then a washer on the outside and a bolt. These are going to be tough to thread because this is just free floating. All right, there you go. Nice and loose. Tighten everything down 10 inches from the table. Really can't beat that. It's like it's not even there and then it just tightens down one little knob. Nice and secure. Riving knife adjustment. Mine is as perfect as you could possibly get. I have the carbide tips up against the fence here, just gently. And this riving knife is just a hair away from this fence. It's exactly in the middle of these carbide tips. This is always nearly impossible to show you guys, but here is your riving knife right here. Carbide tips. You can see the carbide tips are perfectly aligned with that riving knife. It's impressive actually. This is your riving knife adjustment. This is exactly the same as the skill saw. Loosen these two bolts, loosen this jam nut, adjust the angles. They tell you to put a piece of paper between the fence. I find that nearly impossible to make work. 
I was able to align the skill saw by just moving it with my fingers and tightening things down. It's very fidgety. It took me about 10 minutes. It's doable, but it is not ideal. We're gonna check the alignment of the blade and the fence. I'm gonna tell you the fence is gonna be spot on because I already solved this problem. You can see the video of me calling customer service because this was not adjusted right from the factory. And I just wanted to see what customer service would say about it. So they solved this problem. See the link up here for that video if you wanna see how to perfectly align this fence. The blade, we're gonna check right now. Let's do it. So our blade alignment, I had to put the short way again. Because this is a job side saw and these riving knives are captive, I could not get this. It was real close. Like all I needed was another quarter inch, but here we are. The span here is six inches. I have this set to zero. That is what I expected from my Bosch money. Straight out of the box. Six inch span, as perfect as perfect can be. I wish we could do the 10 inch the long way, but it is what it is. Perfect. Should you need to adjust your blade parallel to your miter slot, here are the front adjusting bolts. Allen key, they fit the wrench that came with the saw, and then there's corresponding ones in the back. There's the ones in the back. Obviously, I turned the saw on its side. It's sitting on the stand, and it's easier to show you guys this stuff. All right, we'll flip our saw gauge around. I'm going to put this in a random spot, lock it down, toss our saw gauge on there, zero it out. Five thou, off by five thousandths, and that is typical. I get about four to five thousandths difference over the entire fence, no matter how many times I lock it down. I have this to where I feel it's acceptable. It's safe, it's acceptable. It's not a rack and pinion fence. It has to align itself and then lock down, and it does it very well. There's the old Wixie gauge we always use. Let's find out if the stops on the saw are set right from the factory, 90 and then 45 degrees. So it's already zeroed. We'll hit zero again. 90.2. For me, that's good enough. We'll slide it over, 45 against the stop. And 44.9. I can live with that. As far as I'm concerned, that's close enough. Because if I mess with these stops, am I going to get it better than this? Eh, maybe. Here's your stops, little cam on a Phillips head screw. The pointer could use a little adjustment. It's off by half a degree or so, but that's okay. 45, there's your stop. Adjustment for the pointer is down here. Simple enough. Locks down nice and secure with the lever. Not going anywhere. Just regular noise in here is about eh, 35 decibels or so. Let's sound test this thing. We're about 30 inches from the mic to the front of the blade, like we always are. It's not the noisiest one we've heard, for sure. Before we start cutting, let's have a quick look at our miter gauge. We got a piece of aluminum stock with a metal disc to hold it in the slot. The miter gauge itself is all metal all metal plastic on the bottom probably to help it slide it's got a metal pin that fits in here and then the knob is plastic it's got a washer and that's what holds it all together it screws right down in there it's got some very easy to read numbers slides nice and smooth it's got stops that are adjustable with a little jam nut and a phillips head screwdriver metal pointer this thing's nice Really nice. It's got a tab, flips over, that you can hit 90 or 45. And it looks like it's adjusted pretty dang close from the factory. No holes and no slots to put a sacrificial fence or some additional fence on this, which is the only disappointment really. But honestly, you could drill your own holes if you wanted to and attach something to it. Let's check how accurate it is. All right, so we flip our little tab up, put it up against the stop, tighten it down. 
90 degrees. And tough for me to show you guys, it is off by the tiniest little hair. I think the issue is this little tab, this little tab is not very tight. So while its intention is good, it moves just a hair. I mean, like probably half a degree over when you slam it up against it. So probably real good for the job site and just fine. You could also compensate for that little bit of wiggle by adjusting this. So you could move that out of there. All right, enough screwing around. We have a half inch plywood, a three quarter inch plywood, one by pine, two by, we're gonna rip in half. We got some red oak. We have the zero clearance plate and we have the dado plate. So. Let's run this easy stuff through there. I'm sure it'll do just fine, but we'll find out. And then we have this four by four. We're gonna run three quarter wide by an inch and a half deep dado through this. That is green treated. That, in my opinion, is still a good baseline for how much power these saws make. So let's get it done. So I have the saw unplugged, obviously. We're getting some burning on the inside, obviously. Something's getting pinched here and I cannot figure out what it is. I put the saw gauge back on it, push it back. It's off by eh, about five thou, but it's off getting wider at the back. So I wouldn't expect there'd be that much burning or that much binding. The blade is straight. The blade is 90. The riving knife is lined up beautifully. This is parallel with the miter slot. This is off by five thou. I can't tell you why this thing is doing this. It did it to the two by four too. So the plywood's thin enough to where it wasn't an issue, but I can feel the tension feeding this. Always a curveball. Always a freaking curveball with these things. We're off by that much. I couldn't tell you why this thing's binding. I seriously couldn't tell you. 35.7. 35.66. That's exactly what the saw gauge is telling me too. It's the one angle I always forget to check and always forget to show you guys. Perfect. Perfect to the back too. All the way back there. Perfect. Why is this thing burning wood? Why? This doesn't make any sense. Every angle's pretty damn close. As good or better than other saws we've done, and we haven't had this problem. So what is going on? Let's swap out the blade just to make sure that that's not the reason. It does have a little bit of an odd wear mark on it. Let's throw this in and see what happens. So terrible burn marks on this two by four. I threw the Milwaukee blade in there. Let's just eliminate that Bosch blade as a possible reason for this. We'll just run this real quick. Yeah. 
something is up with that blade, man. Because zero burn, zero burn on this one. And I pushed it a little faster than I should have, but there was no binding. I didn't feel the binding I did when this blade was in there. So let's, let's run the red oak again, just for fun and make sure. All right, there's our burn marks on our red oak. Once again, I cut off the piece that the Bosch did. That's what the Milwaukee blade did. Bosch blade, moment of truth, clean as a whistle. Zero burn on this. Something's wrong with that Bosch blade. You buy this saw, take that Bosch blade, throw it right in the trash. All right, here's our dado set. I was afraid we were gonna miss out on cutting a crazy fat dado with this saw, but the Milwaukee blade straightened this out. It cuts, <laughs> it cuts like butter now. So we're gonna install our dado set and we'll run three quarter by inch and a half dado through some treated green wood. And let's see how powerful this thing really is. Every freaking time, man. Here's the outer washer that came with the saw. Here is the dado accessory one that comes with it. With the dado saw, it says for dado use only right on it. This thing is really tiny by comparison. It does say you should not use this with a normal blade, so we will not. So I installed this incorrectly, so you can see how important it is to read directions. This is the standard inner washer still installed in there. It is not what you should be using because you do not have enough arbor. Even with three quarters dado, there's not enough arbor left to put the nut on safely. This outer washer, the one that's usually here for a standard blade, goes on the inside before you put the dado stack in. And then you should have enough arbor left to safely put the nut on to secure the nut on there. There's our standard inner nut, very thick. This gets left off. There's the thinner outer washer, gets swapped in. Now we put our dado set on and then we use the thin washer for the outside. With the nut, we should have enough arbor left to safely put a nut on here. There you go, inner washer left out. This big fat guy, leaving that out. We got arbor sticking out past our nut there. Let's see how much power the saw's got. And that's the amount of sawdust we ended up with. Not terrible, but for a job site saw, it's probably what you'd expect. That dado, I think, caused a lot of it. All right, we got our zero clearance insert. It is flexible plastic, comes with screw holes, and it came with screws. So I got a blade in there all the way down, riving knife all the way down. I'm gonna level this, just from experience, I'm going to level this first and then install these screws. Because if you put the screws in and then level it, it can pull itself distorted and be an issue. You only tighten these screws as much as you need to to hold their insert down. These are not tight at all. We're gonna plug this on, we'll turn it on. I'm gonna turn the dust collector on and we'll just slowly raise our blade right through the plastic. Well, I took this back off to pull the riving knife back up and promptly lost a screw probably down the dust collector. So yeah, turn your dust collector off when you're messing around with your stuff. Here is the safety equipment. Fits in here, backside goes in there, down, 
push the lever down, nice and secure. It's got a nice detent, fits in this hole back here. It's pretty simple. So let's run one through with the zero clearance and the safety stuff on, see how it does. This edge facing you is the edge for the zero clearance. Not bad. Well, how do we end up with this thing? I think it did pretty good. Honestly, it did the dado, no problem. It's got a nice fence, a heavy fence. I don't think I mentioned this in the video, but you can attach bolts to this rail. There is an opening on the side. You can actually attach things to it. It's very heavy, it's stable. The stand is awesome. The table is a nice quality. Everything's good quality. This whole saw is good quality. It's just an older style. And that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. It just means it's older styled. Do I recommend it? I do. I think it's a good saw. It's got tons of power. That freaking saw blade threw me for a loop <laughs> today. And I've never had a saw blade cause binding like that. I don't know what that was all about. But with this fine tooth Milwaukee blade, this thing cuts like a butter and is awesome. This fence, I would check fairly often if I was going to own this saw. I mean, this saw is pretty new to me, so maybe it's going to stay straight for a long time of getting jostled and, you know, moved in a truck. It's possible. It's possible it could just stay like that for a long time. Like everything I do on this channel, I'm going to keep using this and... I will tell you if I have trouble with it, for sure. You'll hear from me. For a professional grade saw, this thing did very nice. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know your experiences with this. I know someone commented that they had to replace a bearing. They owned two of these and had to replace the bearing on the motor after a few years. So look down in the comments and see what people say because there are this this design's been out for a long time and there's people that have been using this way longer than i have but if you're thinking about buying it at least i gave you an up close view of all the components and everything you can expect and hopefully if you buy one it does well for you so let me know what you guys think hit me up in the comments thank you so much for watching my video if you liked it hit subscribe because we do a lot of freaking table saw videos and I think next is going to be either the Matabo or the Ryobi. One of those two. The Ryobi, we got to get that out of the way. We got to. It's like a cloud sitting right here following me around. So hit subscribe if you'd like to see that or hit thumbs up on this video because it helps out the channel a lot and I really appreciate it. You guys have a great one. Thank you very much for watching.